Okay, part two. Today we're talking about muscle fiber type adaptations. So here's a quick overview of muscle fiber types. There is a spectrum of fiber types from slow twitch to fast twitch. On the slow twitch end, the fibers are small and weak, they generate tension a little bit more slowly, and they are energy efficient. These fibers are good for endurance based and low force movements. On the fast twitch end of the spectrum, muscle fibers are bigger and stronger. They generate tension more quickly, but they have very little endurance. These fibers are good for high speed and high muscular force movements, things like sprinting, jumping, and weightlifting. So it's efficiency versus proficiency, and then you have a whole bunch of fibers in the middle that have a mix of the two. Okay, so everybody has muscle fibers in all areas of the spectrum, but the fiber type makeup in a particular muscle adapts to activity over time. If you do more endurance based stuff, you get more slow twitch fibers. If you do more high force stuff, you get more fast twitch fibers. So let's talk about strength training. Strength training uses maximum muscle tension. So it is very much fast twitch dominant. Anyone who says that slow twitch is absolutely wrong. However, the muscle contractions during strength training last relatively long. We're talking about a whole second or maybe even two or three seconds of max tension on heavy reps. Muscle fibers, even the slow ones, reach peak tension pretty much instantaneously, generally under a tenth of a second. So when you're sustaining tension for a couple seconds and then doing that three, five, eight, ten times for a set, there is definitely an endurance component to that. As a result, Strength training does pull fibers to the fast twitch side of the spectrum, but not all the way to the fast twitch end. Okay, so here's our spectrum. Understand there are not just two types. There's a progression from slow to fast. And muscle fibers don't jump from one end to the other. They just shift up or down a little. Okay, so strength training is going to pull muscle fibers to somewhere on the fast twitch side, something like right here. Whereas sprinting, jumping, and throwing more high speed things pull fibers closer to the end of the spectrum. Okay, so here's a theoretical scenario. Let's say you're a young athlete, you're active, but you're untrained in strength and explosiveness. Your fiber type makeup might look something like this. This represents an even distribution from slow to fast. Now you start strength training. It's going to cause some shifting of muscle fibers toward that strength training area of the spectrum. So you progress to something like this. So not only does strength training make you stronger like we talked about in part one, but it's also going to make your overall fiber type distribution a little bit more fast twitch. So that's two positive adaptations. That's fantastic. But what if you're a highly trained advanced athlete? you're going to have more fibers over on that fast twitch end of the spectrum. So your distribution might look something like this. And then you strength train, you shift some of those fibers on the end down a little bit. They're still fast twitch, but not quite as fast. So you progress toward a distribution that is overall a little bit less fast twitch. For running and jumping athletes, that's a negative adaptation. So for more advanced athletes, Strength training is still going to make you stronger, but it might also slow you down a little bit. And this is tough to deal with because you might think that if I keep doing my explosive training, then I'll keep my fibers on the fast twitch end there. Probably not actually because there's this other component of the total amount of work you do. Basically how it works is a high activity level encourages some efficiency in your muscle fibers. So doing a whole bunch of explosive training is not going to compensate for the strength training. You're still going to get some of that downward shifting of those muscle fibers. So there's an article on my site, it's called Taking Time Off. In that article I talk about something called the overshoot phenomenon. It has to do with muscle fiber type adaptations. I encourage you to go read that article. Alright, then in part three of the series we're going to talk about another problem that we run into with strength training. Stay tuned.